بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين والصلاة والسلام على أشرف الأنبياء والمرسلين حبيب إله العالمين أبي القاسم المصطفى محمد وعلى أهل بيته الطيبين الطاهرين الذين أذهب الله عنهم الرجس وطهرهم تطهيرا قال الله تعالى في كتابه الكريم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم ونريد أن نمن على الذين استضعفوا في الأرض ونجعلهم أئمة ونجعلهم الوارثين Respected brothers and sisters, السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته First of all, it's great to be back and alhamdulillah, I kept you all in my du'as in my ziyarah while I was visiting the imams of the Ahl Bayt in Iraq where I had the opportunity to first visit Imam Musa ibn Ja'far al-Kadhim, the seventh Imam of Ahl al-Bayt, and his grandson, Imam Muhammad al-Jawad, the ninth Imam of Ahl al-Bayt, who are both buried in Baghdad, in Kadhimiyya. And then I also visited Imam al-Hasan al-Askari, the eleventh Imam, and the tenth Imam, Imam al-Hadi, in Samarra. And then, I went to Karbala where I visited Imam al Hussein and Abu al Fadl al Abbas السلام, and also we visited Amir al Mu'mineen Ali ibn Abi Talib. السلام. So, Iraq, in Iraq, there are several Imams, and I encourage you all to, to go and visit because there is a, it's a very unique experience and it's very important for the individual to not only learn and follow the Imams, but to also go and visit the shrines of the Imams. A few days ago, the Shia world celebrated the birth of Imam al-Mahdi al-Muntadar ajalallahu ta'ala farajah al-Sharif, the 12th Imam who was born on the 15th of Sha'ban in the year 255 after Hijrah. Of course, Imam al-Mahdi is not an Imam only for the Shia. Some have the idea that if you believe in Imam al-Mahdi, if you follow Imam al-Mahdi, then you have to be a follower of the Al-Bayt and you have to be a Shia. That's not true. Imam al-Mahdi, the belief in Imam al-Mahdi is a universal belief. It's a belief that all Muslims believe in. In fact, not only all Muslims, all religions believe in a savior at the end of time. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in the Quran, وَلَقَدْ كَتَبْنَا فِي الزَّبُورِ مِنْ بَعْدِ الذِّكْرِ أَنَّ الْأَرْضَ يَرِثُهَا عِبَادِيَ الصَّالِحُونَ And we have written in the Zabur, in the Psalms of David, مِنْ بَعْدِ الذِّكْرِ After the Torah, that the earth will be inherited by the righteous. In another verse, Allah says, وَعَلَى اللَّهُ الَّذِينَ آمَنُوا مِنْكُمْ وَعَمِلُوا الصَّالِحَاتِ لَيَسْتَخْلِفَنَّهُمْ فِي الْأَرْضِ كَمَا اسْتَخْلَفَ الَّذِينَ مِنْ قَبْلِهِمْ وَلِيُمَكِّنَنَّ لَهُمْ دِينَهُمْ وَالَّذِي ارْتَضَى لَهُمْ Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has made a promise to all of the believers throughout time, throughout history, all of those believers, وَعَلَى اللَّهِ الَّذِينَ آمَنُوا مِنْكُمْ This is a wa'ad, this is a promise by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, what? لَيَسْتَخْلِفَنَّهُمْ فِي الْأَرْضِ Those who were the believers, eventually they will inherit the land. Eventually their message and their purpose and what they live for, their goals that they live for, that will be the overcoming and overpowering message. Sometimes we lose hope. Sometimes we lose faith. I say, you know what, what's the point of believing? I'm believing, I'm, I'm having faith, I'm trying my best, but you see falsehood and vices all around me. This is something that has been going on throughout history. All of the prophets, they had to deal with this. Rasulullah had to deal with this. Amir al-Mu'mineen, all of the Imams, where they were killed and they were persecuted, but there will come a time where justice will be established, where the truth will prevail, and that is at the end of time. In another verse, Allah says, هُوَ الَّذِي أَرْسَلَ رَسُولَهُ بِالْهُدَىٰ وَدِينِ الْحَقِّ لِيُظْهِرَهُ عَلَى الدِّينِ كُلِّهِ وَلَوْ كَرِهَ الْمُشْرِكُونَ Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is the one who sent his messenger with 
the righteous religion, and this religion will eventually overpower and overcome all other ideologies. Today is the message of Islam, the message of Rasulullah, the true message of Islam. We're not talking about Islam in quantity. Today some Muslims, they get very excited. Oh, Islam is the fastest growing religion. Yes, fastest growing religion, but you see, perhaps many of them are not following Islam the way it's supposed to be followed. The true message of Rasulullah, what, what Rasulullah wants, that will prevail and that will overcome all other teachings and ideologies. And similarly in hadith, we mentioned in the Quran, in hadith, Allah, uh, Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi, there are several narrations from Rasulullah, narrated by his companions, narrated by the Ahlul Bayt alayhi salam, that talk about the Mahdi, that talk about the one who will establish justice at the end of time. So today for some Muslims that say, oh, Imam al-Mahdi is a Shi'i only belief, this is wrong. Go and look at Sahih Bukhari, go and look at Muslim, go and look at Tirmidhi, go and look at Ahmad ibn Hanbal, go and look at all these scholars. They have all narrated hadith and narrations from Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi regarding Imam al-Mahdi ajallahu ta'ala In fact, they narrate that Rasulullah says al-Mahdi is from my progeny. He is from the descendants of Fatima. The caliphs after me, al-Khulafa min ba'di ithna ashar. Rasulullah, he says this. He says the caliphs and the leaders after me are 12. How many imams do we believe in? We believe in 12 imams. Because these are the imams that Rasulullah told people about. These are the imams that, that um, not only the Qur'an, not only Rasulullah, but in fact, the Jews, they also had 12 tribes, and, the, and Jesus had 12 disciples. There's a, there's a correlation between all of this. Rasulullah says, Al-Khulafa min ba'di ithna ashar, akhiruhum al-Mahdi. The last one is al-Mahdi. And these are all narrations narrated by the Sunni school of thought. Now what's ironic is that some, they come and they say, yes, we believe in al-Mahdi. We believe that he's from the descendants of Fatima. We believe that he's from the family tree of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi, and we accept him. However, they reject the 11 before him. You have to accept, if you believe in the 12th, that means you have to believe in the 11 before him. Who were the 11 before him? I will tell you who the 11 were before him. Do you know who the 11 before him were? You who are rejecting them. So this is a very important issue. So we establish that all Muslims believe in Al-Mahdi. Al-Mahdi means the guided one. And in fact, in the, in the Prophet's Masjid, in the Prophet's Masjid, Masjid al-Nabawi, today if you go, you'll see the name of Imam al-Mahdi inscribed on the wall of Masjid al-Nabi. And not only the name of Imam al-Mahdi, the name of all of the 12 Imams, they are written there, Muhammad al-Mahdi. A few days ago I posted this and someone messaged me saying, oh, this is the name of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa Meaning that there's no such a thing as a Mahdi and, and this is just the name of Rasulullah. No, it's not the name of Rasulullah because the name is next to the names of the other Imams. Why would the name of Rasulullah be there? The name of Rasulullah already has its own place. So here, the only difference between the Muslims regarding Imam al-Mahdi Ajallahu Ta'ala Farajahu Sharif is that his birth, we believe Imam al-Mahdi was born. And this is why I said in the beginning of the speech, the Shia celebrated the birth of Imam al-Mahdi. Because the followers of the Al-Bayt, we believe Imam al-Mahdi was born. And this is why we celebrated the 15th of Sha'ban. The others, they say, no, Imam al-Mahdi could be any person, someone who's from the descendants of the Prophet. Even they say that he, was a, he could be a bad person. He could be someone who's like a criminal, a thug. Because it goes back to a hadith, يُسْلِحُهُ اللَّهِ فِي لَيْلَةً Where Rasulullah says that Allah will change him in a night 
meaning that he could be a bad person, suddenly he changes and he becomes a good person. We say no, he's always a good person and he has been born. Allah will change his circumstances where he will be able to reveal himself within one night. Meaning within one night, everything will change. So we believe that he was born, whereas the other Muslims, some of them re reject that he was born. Even though there is proof in, the, in some of the books of the non-Shi'i school of thought that some scholars say he was born as well. Another is his long life. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has prolonged his life. And the third area of dispute is the occultation, the ghayba, an imam who's hidden from the eyes. But this is not strange for us. And I've talked about this before, so I don't want to focus too much on this. For, a, for someone to have a hidden birth, Prophet Musa alayhi salam, his birth was hidden. Pharaoh wanted to kill anyone from the Israelites because he had heard a prophecy that the Isra one of the Israelites, of, of the children, of the babies born from the Israelites is going to be the reason for his downfall. So he brought the, um, the midwives in the houses of any lady who was pregnant and as soon as a child was born, they would kill the child. This is what Pharaoh was doing. Out of fear of Musa, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala protected the life of Musa and Musa, Prophet Musa was raised in the house of Pharaoh. See, when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wants things to work out, Allah will make them work out. Where the, Moses was in the house of Pharaoh and Pharaoh was killing the others, thinking he, is, he has defeated the one who is going to come and crush him. Once again, Imam al is the promise of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. If the whole world tries to stop Imam al will they be able to? No. This is one, his birth. Second, his long life. Which prophet in the Quran, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, lived for 950 years? Which prophet? Noah. Prophet Noah. Prophet Noah. Noah lived, Allah says in the Quran, Prophet Noah lived with his people for 950 years. Third, there's a prophet that's in occultation right now, in ghaybah right now. Which prophet is that? Isa. Jesus is in occultation. Jesus did not die. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, وَرَفَعْنَاهُ And we raised him. وَرَفَعَهُ إِلَيْهِ So therefore, Jesus is in occultation. Hidden from the eyes, but Jesus is alive and he will come down. And Bukhari mentions, Bukhari narrates that when Jesus comes down in Jerusalem, Imam al-Mahdi will be in Jerusalem and then puts and Jesus will come down. And once the followers of Jesus, who are the Jews and the Christians, because Jesus is the Messiah. The Jews who are waiting for the Messiah, they're going to see Jesus as the Messiah. And Jesus, who his followers, the Christians, they're going to see that Jesus has come down. Jesus will be with Imam al-Mahdi. And therefore, all of them will be together. And Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi says, كَيْفَ بِكُمْ إِذَا نَزَلَ بْنُ مَرْيَمْ وَإِمَامُكُمْ مِنْكُمْ How would you be if the son of Mary comes down and the imam of the prayer, the leader of the prayer is from you? Meaning Imam al-Mahdi. Meaning Imam al-Mahdi will be the one who leads the prayer. So this is an issue regarding Imam al-Mahdi. Allah ta'ala Now, Imam al-Mahdi was born on the 15th of Sha'ban in the year 255 after Hijrah. His father is Imam al-Hasan al-Askari, the 11th Imam of Ahl al-Bayt. And his mother is Nargis. And she was brought from the Roman Empire and she is from the descendants of one of the disciples of Jesus. Jesus had disciples. One of the disciples of Jesus she is Nargis, she is from the descendants of that disciple. And what's interesting is that Imam al-Mahdi was born in the year 255 after Hijrah. At the same time as his birth, year 255, you have scholars, you have muhaddithin, you have 
scholars talking about the birth of Imam al-Mahdi and talking about al-Mahdi, narrating hadith from Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa So for example, Bukhari, Bukhari, he's, he's talked about Imam al-Mahdi. Bukhari dies year 256 after Hijrah, one year after the birth of Imam al-Mahdi. So he's, he's writing about Imam al-Mahdi and Imam al-Mahdi is born. Tirmid uh, Muslim, who they say Sahih Muslim, he dies year 260 after Hijrah. So Imam al-Mahdi is five years old at that time. Tirmidhi, he dies 279 after Hijrah. They all narrate a hadith regarding Imam al-Mahdi. This is in the Sunni side. On the Shi'as, you have the Imams of the al bayt Imam al-Askari, Imam al-Hadi, Imam al-Jawad, Imam al-Rida, Imam al-Baqir, Imam al-Sadiq, all Imam al-Kalim, all the Imams from Rasulullah, all the Imams, they all talk about Imam al-Mahdi. And they talk in detail. So Rasulullah doesn't only just say, oh, al-Mahdi is going to be the one who will establish justice. No, he says he will have two ghaybahs. He will have two occultations. Imam al-Sadiq, he cries for the occultation of Imam al-Mahdi. And he cries that so many people are going to lose faith in the Imam. One of his companions, he enters on Imam al-Sadiq and he sees the Imam crying, Sayyidi, ghaybatuka nafat raqadi wa dayyat alayya mihadi wa abtazzat minni rahatu fuadi. He tells him, why are you crying? He says, I'm crying for the Mahdi who will be hidden from the eyes of people and many people, they will lose their faith in him. Many people, they will not even believe in him. They will not even accept him. Many people, they will live their lives as if they don't have an imam. This is how we live our lives today. Do we actually live our life as if we have an imam that's with us? Imagine if Imam Ali was around right now, how would we act? If Imam Ali right now, he's alive, he's in a different country. How, how would we be? If Imam Hussein was around right now, how would we be? We would be very different. Imagine if Rasulullah was around, alive right now. We'd have a stronger relationship with him. Right now, our relationship with Imam Ali, he is alive. But our relationship with the Imam is very weak or non-existent for many of us. And this is something that we have to work on. So, Surrounding the birth of Imam al-Mahdi, the circumstances were very dangerous. Imam al-Hasan al-Askari, his father, he has two very important roles and duties to carry out. One is that he has to protect the life of Imam al-Mahdi. Okay? Because now, even the, everyone knows that during the time of the birth, everyone knows that the twelfth from this lineage is going to be the one who will rid the world of injustice. And there were several attempts to arrest the Imam. There were several attempts, even there were many spies in the house of Imam al Hassan al Askari. Because they wanted to see who was going to be the next one. And they thought that it was going to be at that time, this one is going to, whoever is going to come, he's going to, you know, change the government and, and you know, remove the oppression. So there were many spies in the house. And this is why Imam al Hassan al Askari protected the life of Imam al-Mahdi by concealing his birth. There were people in the house of Imam al-Askari, they didn't know there was a baby in the, born in the house. They didn't know there was a child living for five years in the house. They didn't know because the Imam was hidden in a room and he would bring him out only to his close and devout companions. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala was protecting the life of the Imam the same way Right now, perhaps he's passed by us and we haven't seen, we didn't know him. So this was one of the roles of Imam al-Askari, to protect the life of the Qa'im. And the second was to let some of the Shi'as, some of his followers know that there has been, Imam al-Mahdi has been born. He has to let them know. Otherwise, if no one knows, then how are people going to believe in him? So this is why Imam al-Hasan al-Askari, he did several things. وَرُوِيَ عَنْ أَبِي جَعْفَرَ الْعَمْرِ This is Muhammad ibn Uthman, al safir al-Thani. There were four deputies for Imam al-Mahdi during his ghaybah. One of them is Muhammad ibn Uthman, he's the second one. He says, قَالَ لَمَّا وُلِدْ وُلِدْ السَّيِّدْ عَلَيْهِ السَّلَامِ When the Sayyid was born, meaning Imam al-Mahdi was born, 
قال أبو محمد عليه السلام إمام الحسن العسكري his name is أبو محمد he said ابعثوا إلى أبا عمر أبا عمر is the father of السفير الثاني محمد بن عثمان who is عثمان بن سعيد السفير الأول the first deputy of the Imam representative of the Imam his name is عثمان بن سعيد he says bring him to me so he tells him, اشتري عشرة آلاف رطل خبز وعشرة آلاف رطل لحما Buy 10,000 pounds of bread and 10,000 pounds of meat and pass it on to the believers, to the mu'mineen. Why? Because we're announcing or we are celebrating the birth of Imam al-Mahdi and free such and such slaves. So some of the close companions of Imam al-Hasan al-Askari they heard, they heard that, Imam, that he has a son that has been born. One of them, he's a scholar who was the leader of the Shi'as in Qom. His name is Ahmed ibn Ishaq al-Ash'ari al-Qummi. This, this man, he met four of the Imams, Imam al-Jawad, Imam al-Hadi, Imam al-Askari, and Imam al-Mahdi. And there's a masjid in Qom, if any of you have gone to Qom, there's a masjid close to the shrine of Sayyidah Maqsuma by the name of Masjid Imam al-Hasan al-Askari. This masjid, this man, this man, Ahmed ibn Ishaq, he received a letter, an order from the Imam telling him, build a masjid in Qom. So he built that masjid and until now, many people, they go and they pray there. It's called Masjid Imam al-Hasan al-Askari. This man, Ahmed ibn Ishaq, he received a letter from Imam al-Askari. Imam al-Askari tells him, he tells him, ولد المولود فليكن عندك مستورا. He tells him, the one, the newborn that we are all anticipating has been born. But keep this as a private matter with you. وعن جميع الناس مكتوما. And don't tell people. فإنا لم نظهر عليه إلا الأقرب لقرابته. Because we have not revealed him except to those who are very close. Depending on how close they are. وَالْمَوْلَى لِوِلَايَتِهِ And the one who has the wilaya of the Ahlul Bayt. أَحْبَبْنَا إِعْلَامَكْ لِيُسُرُّكَ اللَّهِ بِهِ كَمَا سَرَّنَا بِهِ وَالسَّلَامِ The Imam tells him, I wanted to tell you, so God makes you happy with this birth, just as He has made us happy. Now, we ask, why do we celebrate the, birth, the births of the Imams? Because these are happy occasions for the Imams. So this man, Ahmed ibn Ishaq, he goes to Samarra to see the Imam because he heard the Imam has been born. He goes to Samarra and he says, Imam al Hassan al Askari, he brought him. He brought him out and he was carrying a child that was around three years old. He was carrying a child that was around, that looked around three years old on his shoulders and I saw him. And I was very happy. I was very happy that he revealed him to me. Where there are other people who are in the house, they have not seen him. So he says, I want to see him. He says, I went and I spoke to him. I, I saw the child. And I tell him, Uridu alama, I want a sign. Uridu ayah. So he says, he began to speak to me, the child. And he began to say, Ana baqiyatullahi fil ard. والمنتقم من أعدائه ولا تطلب أثرا بعد عين يا أحمد بن إسحاق. He tells him, أنا بقية الله في الأرض. I am one of the names of Imam Mahdi is بقية الله. What does بقية الله mean? The remaining proof of God, because he is the abs, he is the manifestation and the proof of Allah سبحانه وتعالى. Without him. There's no point in life continuing. There's no hujjah. There's no proof of God. So then he says, I went and I asked his father, Imam al-Askari, to tell me more. So he says, I, I tell him, I heard there's going to be an occultation. This Imam, this son of yours, we're not going to see him. He says, yes. He says, there's going to be a ghaybah. An occultation where many people are going to stop believing in the imam. Only those who are tested, only those who have the highest levels of faith, they will be, they will continue to believe in the imam 
فلا يبقى إلا من أخذ الله عز وجل عهده بولايتنا وكتب في قلبه الإيمان وأيده بروح منه The only one who will continue to believe in him is the one who has made a covenant with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and it has been engraved in their hearts and is supported by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And then he tells him, Ya Ahmad ibn Ishaq, Amrun min amr Allah, wa sirrun min sirr Allah, wa ghaybun min ghayb Allah, faqud ma ataytuk wa aktum huwakum min ash-shakirin, takum ma'ana fi alliyin. He tells him, this is one of the matters of God, this is one of the secret matters that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has chosen. Some people say, why does the Imam have to be in occultation? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to protect his life. That's one. There were many, all of the Imams, they were killed. Now this last one, Allah has to protect his life. Another issue, we need to reach maturity, levels of spiritual maturity, intellectual maturity. If Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is supposed to send everyone at once, then Allah should have sent Rasulullah from the beginning. Skip Adam, skip Ibrahim, skip all of that, send Rasulullah from the beginning. No. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala sent Rasulullah after all of the prophets. And then after he was born, 40 years after he was born, Rasulullah was given permission to go out and preach. So there's a timing for everything. Sometimes we are quick, sometimes we want things quickly. But Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala knows exactly when is the right time. And so many people, they come and they ask, when will the Imam rise? When will the Imam appear? All of this oppression. Yes, there's a lot of oppression going on, and we do dua. But the more important question is, when am I going to be ready for the Imam? Don't ask when the Imam will rise. Ask, when am I going to change? When am I going to be a real follower? When am I going to change my habits? This is what we have to ask. Because if you were a mu'min, if you were a believer, if you were someone who's qualified to be with the Imam, you will be with the Imam. We believe in Dua Al-Ahad, we recite that Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala will raise some of the Mu'mineen, some of the believers. They will be raised, they will come back to life to witness, to witness that great moment, that success. And even if you didn't, you died as a Mu'min, you died as a believer. That's what's important. To say, you know what, let me live my life however I want, let me do haram, let me follow the desires, and then once the imam comes, we'll change. You know who did that? Those people who turned against Imam al Hussein, those who turned against Imam al Hassan, those who turned against the imams of the Ahlul Bayt. We need to change. And when we celebrate the birth of the imam, this is what we do. So, Imam al Mahdi, Ajalallahu ta'ala, Farajahu al Sharif, had, after, during those five years, he was with his father. Sometimes some of the companions, they would come and they would see him. And then the day his father passed away, his imama began and the ghaybah to sughra began. A ghaybah which lasted for 69 years. And this was the preliminary ghaybah, the preliminary occultation, which place things in order to set us for the greater occultation. And in that, there were four sufala, four deputies, Uthman ibn Sa'id, Muhammad ibn Uthman, Hussein ibn Ruh, and Ali ibn Muhammad as samari And the last one, six days before his death, he receives a letter. The last one, the first ruled for five years, where he was the Safir, the representative for five years, and then the second one for 40 years, and then the third one for three years, and then the fourth one for three years. He receives a letter, he tells him, you're going to die. Imam, the Imam tells him, you're going to die in six days. And there's, don't give the matter to anyone after you. There is no more direct representation after you. Then there is the general representative, like the maraja that we have right now. And then six days later, one of his companions, he says, we came. And we saw him, he was taking his last breath. We asked him, Do you, who is the one after you? Who is the one who we have to follow after you? He says, The matter belongs to Allah, and he took his last breath and he dies. And that was the beginning 
of the Ghaybat al-Kubra, which goes on until today. My dear brothers and sisters, we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to bless you all and to make us from the sincere and loyal and devout followers of Imam al-Mahdi al-Muntaba rahajallahu ta'ala farajahu al-Sharif. Wassalamu alaykum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Allahumma salli ala Muhammad.